because she has a lot of experience with that. And I'm going to talk about uh, some searches and some lists and some more uh, more options for how you can find and kind of organize the people you know. So let's uh, first welcome Angela and talk to her. suggestions, ideas, comments to help other people along with this. Because in our group, we have people at all different levels. In real life. Everybody now, business cards, more and more and more, the business cards getting the Twitter name on it, which is great. Hopefully you are all doing that. I will admit, I need to make new cards up. Mine aren't on there yet, but hopefully we're doing that. John's having a tweet up coming up, another great way, because in business, Yes, we're all on Twitter, but unless we know each other in real life, I haven't sold a house yet to someone I actually haven't met in person. <laughs> I have sold a house to somebody I've met on Twitter, then met in person, and it's developed into a relationship. So you still need that person-to-person -person bond and trust, as you guys all know. Um, Foursquare, another great place to get Twitter, and Facebook. Um, where else are you guys finding ways to find? Where are you finding other outlets, you're finding your Twitter followers, other than on Twitter. Anything strange, new, fun, exciting? Anybody walk up to anybody on the street and go, hey, are you on Twitter? <laughs> 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 you? I got a slide for that. <laughs> Who are you? Um, obviously, a lot of people that are using it for fun. Are you following celebrities? Are you a cyber stalker? <laughs> you know? But, great way to find people. You find someone that does interest you, you look at their follower list, you're going through it, okay, who do they follow? Who's following them? Great way to find different people. You don't always have to say something. Sometimes there's nothing to be said, but that's a good way to go. News. You're looking at, obviously, all the local guys are on Twitter now. You just go to the website, you find their, their Twitter handles. They're making it very easy. All the national people are on. Um, trades. I know Inman's one of the ones that I use. They do a lot of great real estate stuff. Um, Guy Kawasaki, love following him because you just never know what he's throwing out there, but always great new stuff there, as well as Mashable. And I was telling these guys over here, ladies, I don't know if you're following any of the Mashable guys. Seriously, tell mm -hmm. um, ser Is it not oh, uh, shots for men? Yeah, really? I mean, their hands <coughs> are beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but and they're about 16. That? No. <laughs> Most of them are really young. No, no there are two of them. Oh, oh my God. Okay. They're <laughs> <laughs> all like babies. Yeah. <laughs> great photography. All I'm saying, Kelly, great photography. Mm -hmm. um, I showed you how it's good headshot. Um, where are you guys getting your news? Are you, are you watching it online? You're getting it online? Are most of you getting your news on Twitter these days? Um, there you go, Javon, yes. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, a long time ago when I lived in New Hampshire, I was a NASCAR <coughs> fan. And then I kind of dropped NASCAR. And then the other night, Daytona 500, I fell asleep. I wake up, the TV's still on. Lo and behold, the race has not finished yet. <laughs> so I'm watching for two hours, them cleaning a track. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was more than that. It, it, Twitter was such an interesting, we got a head shaking there, interesting phenomenon in Potato Home 500. If you didn't have Twitter, really you weren't getting anything on the race because one of the guys happened to have his phone in his car. Another, another thing. But anyway, so he starts tweeting. 
So we've got a driver down not on well the track. Driving. No, no, no. <laughs> not well driving, just to clarify. We've got a driver down that's on the back stretch. He's tweeting, okay? The spotters are tweeting. The vice president of NASCAR is tweeting. So there's this whole conversation that's not going on anyplace else but other than on Twitter. And Fox did a great job now as they're every, everything that they start putting up on the screen now as they're broadcasting, every driver's Twitter handle's going up. I mean, it was, it was just, it was like this really cool instant thing on Twitter. I mean, I think they were saying this driver was getting like 70,000 followers an hour. It was crazy the number of followers he was getting. The, and I, I'll admit, I, I did try and win tickets to Pocono Raceway just because I was kind of caught up in the thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. But the, uh, the, the man who owns Pocono Raceway, he was on saying, if I get so many Twitter followers, I'll give out two tickets to po Pocono. If I get this many, I'll give out you know, um, pit passes. If I give it this many, you get, a, you, know, you get a ride the pace car kind of thing. So it was really cool what was going on and how, how it was just kind of like on the fly, things started to roll. And, and, and Twitter was just a great way to disseminate and get information that Again, not a lot of people had, but it made me watch them clean a track for two hours. <laughs> so then the race came on, a few more cautions, and finally it was over. But, but it was interesting. How are you doing? Can you guys say any more? Um, yeah, sure, people are using Twitter to find friends. <laughs> Come on. Friends, did you not watch Friends with Joey? <laughs> oh, how are you doing? doing? Okay, pretend that I'm an Italian guy with an accent. <laughs> um, but great way to find people as well. Um, tweet states, tweets nearby, tweet greater, and just general searches. Those are just places you can go. And what they're going to do is kind of give you your top users in your particular state or whatnot. Gives you a place to start. Basically, just a starting place, just a, a place to go, and you can jump off from there. Businesses. And this is where I started. Um, don't know everybody in the room, but a lot of people remember when I owned State Street Subway. So I wanted targeted local followers. It wasn't going to help me or my business to have followers all across the country. I had one subway. It was on State Street in Bangor, Maine. So what I started doing was um, State Street Trivia. Twibia. <laughs> Twibia. <laughs> Twibia. <laughs> Everything has a W now. State Street Subway Trivia. And we did that every day. And I did, tried to do local trivia contests. And it really got me a really good instant local <coughs> following. And people got a free sandwich. So if your business has something to give away, everybody wants free stuff. Um, and so it's a really good way to get somebody that's targeted towards your business. What does your business have? What kind of service do you have? Um, and that's, that really did help from the beginning. And then obviously I don't have Subway anymore, but I still have a lot of the local followers. And hey, maybe we can play trivia again. <laughs> it was fun, too. It was, it was fun. Was it was, I will tell you. I would just say that even though your Subway was across town, we would never love Subway, and we would go to that one specifically because I knew the owner. Even though you were there, I never think I ever saw you there, but I would go there because I was patronizing Angela's business <laughs> as opposed to the one at the gas station. Not that you don't own a channel. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was fun. Um, I know that's how I met Justin. I was kind of that sort of almost real life stalker. People would come in and I'd be like, is that, is that, I think that is, I think, you know. And for the longest time, Justin's face was only like from here over. So it was only half a face. And I, I wanted to give him a menu. Hi, could you hold this on this side of your face? Okay. Yeah, you are that guy. Okay. <laughs> Um, but all of Stephanie was coming in at that point, so I really got to know a lot of those people, and they were all on Twitter. And Paul was like the Twitter champion, I think, for... No, there was... Who was it that was beating me all the time? Aaron Crow no. for a little bit. No, we don't. No, but I don't know. Paul, I, I think Paul had free subway for a long time. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's awesome. a long time. <laughs> you want Bangor <laughs> trivia? He <laughs> 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 knew Bangor trivia, <laughs> so... But I will say that it, they, you know we had a couple heated ones, and even though I, you know, I made up the question, I thought I knew the answer. I tried to research it beforehand. I, I will say on Twitter, they will call you out if they don't think they like your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so be prepared for that. Um, and as you all know, personal recommendations. You know, if somebody is using your business, they're on Twitter and whatnot. They get on. They tweet out about your business. They put your Twitter 
Turtle Handle out there. It's just such a great way. Nothing beats a personal recommendation. I mean, look at Maggie. Look at um, May Maven. I mean, those guys. It's just, it's, it's really, it's proven time and time again how well that works. But also another thing for businesses and how important it is to have your Twitter handle readily available so people can find it, so people can know it, incorporate it into your signage. Um, don't make people go out and look for it. Really, really works. And I couldn't end without having a picture. <coughs> Mary the Maltese said this bundle, and if any of you follow me on Twitter, you know all about these two. I was gonna bring a bundle today and just have her be my presentation, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought better of it. So any, I mean, any questions you guys have, anything you guys can tell each other, um, because Justin has a lot of more meatier stuff that we want to get into with the searches and the lists. Um, but I'm going to do a lot for you, so I will just turn it right over to him unless you guys have anything. I have a question. Okay. So um, I know you had the free giveaways as a really good way to <coughs> gain followers, but say you don't have anything to like give away as a business, really. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? How would you do that? I would just personally, me, I might go get a gift card from someplace else. Or what is your business? Does your business offer a service? Are you, um, do you make things for blogs? Do you, you know, what do you do? Is there some kind of, um, can you offer a free, you know, half hour consultation or something like that? There's, there's probably something for your business that you can do that can target your specific type of follower. And it doesn't have to be a, um, every day at a certain time. I just did that because I was trying to get, uh, you know, again, targeted and a larger number. But if you're looking for like a bigger number out there in the Twitter universe, um, like Mangianos, when they were, when they first started out and they wanted to get big numbers, they were, they were saying, we'll give away, you know, five $100 gift certificates to our restaurant once we reach these certain, you know, targeted points or we'll give it away in two days or something like that. So there's the bigger companies obviously are giving away more frequently and larger things because they're looking to get <coughs> numbers than some of the smaller companies are. But I would say, you know, really kind of target who you're looking for mm -hmm. um, and give a service away that you think would, would bring that follower in. But you know, Dunkin' Donuts, every America runs on Dunkin', right? Uh, <laughs> who doesn't? But people really in general just like free stuff, so they will sign up. Just uh, my own personal observation of what you've done with it and, mm -hmm. and something that I think can help other people. <clears throat> One of the reasons I think people engaged with you and what you did with Subway was you weren't just constantly tweeting about $5 footlongs, this week's special is this, have a, you know. It was a mix of the Subway stuff, but also, you know, you had a voice and a personality. And if you were just constantly tweeting like, ooh, so, you know, today's the trivia day, I'm gonna give away this, that's great, I would have engaged for that, but I would have completely tuned you out for everything else because I don't just wanna hear constant Subway news. So if you're, if you're getting into it, you're starting to get followers, being, being a part of a conversation rather than just a one-way flow of information, like, no, I don't wanna buy your vacuum, so stop trying to sell me a vacuum. Yeah, um, it, it's really important to have that, that engagement and not just be a one-way flow of information. Uh, I'm glad you said that, because that's usually one of my biggest pet peeves. There was this person that I was following on Twitter that all they were ever doing was their their product, and they would you know put their link to their product up every few hours or something. And finally, I actually sent them a DM that said, "Look, I you know you might have a great product, but I'm never going to recommend it until I know you. And are you you know once I know you, I'm going to know are you going to stand behind your product? Are you a quality per you know what I mean? And that's exactly what you're saying. And also, you remind me another of another thing. Do you off the top of your head? Because I off the top of my head, I don't know it. But do you know the Twitter handle for the Campbell? Fireball run. Fireball run. Mm -hmm. Fireball run. Because that's all coming up here in Bangor. Mm -hmm. And what a great way to be able to get information and know what's going on with it yep. um, as well as going to be the fireball run. I know I started following them. And yep. So, hey, so I do following them. That's the, yeah, that's how <laughs> I, I find people. Is I see what people are, are following and what, what, what they're retweeting. And half the time I'm going out and I, and uh, so there, there we have it. I've lost track again. But, so. So if you want to learn about little white dogs, follow me. <laughs> if you want to know what I'm eating or, or what cupcakes I'm baking today, follow me. Um, or if you want to buy a house, I suppose we could do that as well. Um, <laughs> if you have to. Um, other than that, Mr. Russell. Howdy. You're up.
Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any dogs. We can get you one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to talk about searches and lists because, like I said at the top, uh, I think it's something that is really powerful, but a lot of people aren't using it. Uh, so, first of all, I'm Justin Russell. Uh, if you follow me on that, you get a bunch of random stuff. This isn't just a pitch for Stephanie, but if you're interested in this kind of thing, Stephanie's probably a better place to follow because we talk about this kind of stuff. So, uh, personal or business, you have two options. Uh, for work, I code. Ooh. No. <laughs> <laughs> you all make that. This is what you're going to do. La, 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 la. That's so hot. <laughs> uh, so I code all day. This is, this is what I do for work. But what I really love, my passion about all this stuff, is making, uh, finding ways so that people can find how to use technology better. Um, so sometimes that's through websites. Sometimes that's through web apps. Um, but a lot of times it's through social media, because I think that's a really good way to connect with different people. First of all, I want to say uh, at the top, I like Twitter. Facebook's great. Um, if you want to, you know, it's great for the people you know, uh, but Twitter is great for discovery. It's great for finding new people, finding new opinions, and seeing all this great stuff that people have shared. Um, because you get people who, or you get links and kind of connections you wouldn't get otherwise. So it's not just your high school classmates, it's not just the people you work with, no offense Kelly, uh, <laughs> but it's, you know, people who you're interested in, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to talk a little bit about both probably leaning more towards Twitter just because it's where I spend most of my time. So, first of all, searches. Um, searches are probably my favorite part of social media uh, because you can do so much with them. Uh, but first of all, I have to say that Facebook search isn't really that great. I don't like it that much. Um, it leaves a lot to be desired. But I want to just touch on it. Uh, it gives a nice overview of kind of things that are going on. You can filter it by different things. You can filter it by WHSN. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Wow. But, but, that's hot. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you a nice overview so you can filter by people, by pages, by events, uh, that sort of thing. But you can also use the search box up top. On the search box, box up top to search for terms. Um, and you can filter those by posts by just your friends or public posts from anyone on Twitter. So for example, this isn't doctored. Uh, last night, I searched for Bangor and went into the post by friends. And a couple of uh, posts from Bangor's, one of Bangor's best radio stations uh, came up. And also a announcement about Kaka Cha night next what? Friday. Yeah. Kaka Cha. Kaka Cha, <laughs> right? He can. God bless you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> so, but you can see uh, posts about a specific term that have come from your friends, and you can also do public posts. So, anytime someone has done a post that is available to the public, not just their friends, it will come up in those results too. But at the same time, it doesn't really give you many results. It's kind of an overview of uh, overview of what everyone said, and it's not really that customizable. Twitter, on the other hand, gives you a lot of options for how to search. Um, and you can go <coughs> you can go to twitter.com slash search. Even if you don't have a Twitter account, you can do some searching. Uh, it's great if you do have an account because you can interact with people. Uh, but if you just want to see what's going on, then it's just twitter.com slash search and search for anything you like. If you do decide to get an account, you can do save searches, which is really nice. Um, on the website, once you're logged in, if you click on the search box, any searches you save will appear right underneath that, so you can have really quick access to them uh, and get to them whenever you like, so you don't need to remember all the things you search all the time. Uh, so as far as search, searching for uh, ideas, the probably the most obvious thing you can do is search for your company or product's name. 
so for example, I searched for Bangor Savings last night, and I found, uh, first of all, Josh checking in on Foursquare, so you get to see when people uh, check into your business. And then, of course, you have all the stuff that's happening with their Community Matters More campaign, which if you haven't already voted, you should go to bangor.com and vote. So now Alex is happy, I think. <laughs> um, but you can see anytime anyone mentions your business, uh, it will come up no matter what they say, good or bad. You can search for your industry. So if you want to know, you know uh, if you do heating oil, what, what uh, people are saying about heating oil prices. Or you can search for web development to see what people are doing in the web development space. So that's another uh, type of search. You can do keywords. Anything from town names, so if you want to know anything anyone's saying about Hamden, then you can search for Hamden and find that. Or you can search for, you know, churches or snow or whatever you want to know about. Can I get a, a sense of that? Hashtags. If you're not sure what a hashtag is, it's it's sort of a label to say this post is about this certain thing. So it started out largely as kind of an indicator for conferences and these kind of things so that people could add this little, it's always a pound sign and then some little snippet of text. So for us, it's SMB BGR. So you can go onto Twitter and search for uh, pound sign SMB BGR and see what everyone's saying about uh, social media breakfast. There are also sort of interest hashtags. So over the last few days, one of them that's been pretty popular is the ME politics hashtag because there's been a lot of discussion about uh, Senator Snow and all the follow up from that. So you can follow interest or you can follow events or anything else that people are kind of tagging their posts with. And you can also search for your competition if you want. It might be a good idea just to see what people are saying good and bad about the people, uh, the other people you know in the area. <coughs> Another great thing about Twitter is it lets you do a lot of advanced searching. Um, so if you go to twitter.com slash search dash advanced, um, then you can do all these different sorts of options. So you can search for specific words or phrases. So you can, uh, like for that first search I showed, Bangor Savings and quotes would come up with any tweets that had Bangor Savings as a phrase. Um, you can search from or to specific accounts. So if you want to see anytime anyone's replied to us on Twitter, you can search for uh, tweets that have been sent to SMB BGR. Or you can search near a place, which I really love and I'll get into in a little bit. Or you can search just positive or negative tweets, um, or just questions. So you can search for tweets that have a smiley face or a frowny face on them. Or you can just search for people who have asked questions in their tweets. So for some advanced search ideas, um, you don't need to remember the syntax of all these because the, the advanced search form will spit these out for you, but this is some of what you can do. Um, for example, if you went on there and searched um, snow near 04401, it would show you anyone who's talking about snow around the Bangor area, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you do site space question mark, this is one of my favorite ones to do because it will come up with any time anyone's had a question that includes the word site. So for, a, for example, if someone said, how do I upload an image to my website? Then it would come up with this for me and I could say, if I wanted to respond, then I could tell them how to do that. Another one you can do is just search for a domain name, like a sefe.com or a smbbangor.org, <coughs> and it will not only come up with ones uh, that mention that term, but it will also look through the links that people have posted, and will show you uh, tweets that contain that uh, page address. So for example, this one, if I search for sefe.com, it would search for any time anyone's linked to a page on sefe.com in a tweet. So you can do that for your own business's website and see what people are saying about your website. Do you have to have those specific things like the colon and all Sometimes. It, the easiest way to do it is to go to that advanced search form and then type it in there. There's a field for each of them. So there's like so the near the near thing. If you just type in either 04401 or Bangor Main and box, then it will make that for you. So you don't need to remember oh, which, you know, near, I can't remember the other ones, there are a couple dozen, I think, when you get into it. But the, 
easiest way is to just go into that form and kind of see, uh, kind of put it into there and then it will spit out the right uh, query for you. One last thing with search, and I don't think I need to tell you guys this, but just to cover my bases, please don't spam. Um, a couple, couple of ways you can do this, which are both really, really annoying. Um, you can either post tweets with the intent, the, the sole intent of getting into a search, so you can try to <coughs> stuff your tweets with keywords so that when people search for a certain term, they'll always see your tweets. Um, and you can also, if you're going in through a search, you can, you know, if you search for snow and you sell snowblowers, then you can try to <coughs> reply to everyone in the search that comes up and say, hey, if you want to buy a snowblower, come to me, you know. So make stuff relevant, make stuff that people won't actually want to use, and if you can help people, that's great. But don't just blatantly go through and uh, try to advertise yourself. All right, I'm gonna go through list two, and then uh, questions in there, I guess. So lists are really great on both Facebook and Twitter um, because they limit, uh, they give you a couple of things you can do. They give you uh, an opportunity to kind of view all related tweets or all related posts uh, together at once based on who's posting them. And I, it's also a good way just to filter everything that's coming through your stream because let's face it, a lot of us have hundreds of friends <coughs> or followers on Twitter and Facebook. That's a, a lot to keep up with. So sometimes having a little more focused uh, group for this kind of things makes it a lot more manageable. So to get to lists on Facebook, um, they're over on the left-hand side on the, twi uh, the Facebook side, the Facebook site, and in Twitter, if you click on your little user icon in the header, then there's a little lists option right underneath your profile. Okay, what's the fanboy mode? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in yeah. Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, notice I didn't say who's on these lists. <laughs> but you know, no, like fanboy mode for, yeah, me, for me um, is that's where I put celebrities I like, that's where I put musicians I like. So, uh, for example, that one has a bunch of accounts and pages that have to do with, uh, you know, actors I like and that sort of thing. So I can just go through and see uh, any updates from them if I just want to see what's happening in that sort of world. Um, when timeline went. Um, when you you did your list, when timeline went live, th did that affect anything that you had? I don't think so. Not really. Because that's why I was afraid to start doing lists. Because I thought, here comes timeline. I don't even know how to use timeline. Right. I don't know how to use lists either. So I'll just wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they they made it uh, a little easier. But they made it a little easier to add people to lists, which is a little easier to understand. So hopefully that's uh, getting better at least. Because it was really tough at the beginning. Um, Facebook list. So they give you a bunch of lists to start. They give you a close friends list. They give you a family list, an acquaintances list, and a restricted list. Um, which kind of. You have to keep in mind that for Facebook too, there's a lot having to do with privacy for this. So you can post updates that only certain lists can see. Um, I'm not going to get into that a lot because it gets kind of confusing. Uh, but when I post the slides, this slide, uh, this link down here gives you a lot more information about the privacy uh, aspect of lists and all the control you have over that. It's a lot like circles in Google Plus. Um, Facebook's had it for a while, but Google made it a lot easier to understand, and then Facebook's kind of tried to make it a little easier as they go on. Um, so that's predefined lists. There are smart lists, which are based on um, places you've worked and people around you, that sort of thing. So for example, I have an Orono area list that Facebook made for me. So it will show me everybody uh, who's posting around the Orono area. Um, and I also have a list that it made for the University of Maine and for him and Academy. Um, so I get people who I went to school with, so it's kind of nice to see those people at a glance. And then you can make custom lists, so you can make as many lists as you like uh, based on uh, just groups of people that you want to group together for whatever reason, and I'll give you some ideas for that a little bit later. So 
Is that on your fanboy list? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a fanboy list. Yeah, that's right. There you go. That's hot. <laughs> So how you how you add people to the list on Facebook is you go over to where it says friends at the top of their timeline because you're going to be friends with them. And then you can uh, go through this list, which is all the lists that you have available for you. Um, and you can choose which lists you want them to belong to. And in this case, you can say show all lists to kind of divide a bunch of them. Um, and you can create a new list if you want to do uh, a new group for this person. So for example, Mark's on my close friends list, and he's on my local list because he lives around me, and I know him pretty well. So you can do whatever you like, and you can add people to as many lists as you like. Correct. I just have one very basic list tip yes. that you can make one list for the people that you want to IM you or use Facebook chat, and you can then turn it off for everybody else. Because, and this is like one of my favorite ones. Oh, so I have like, yeah. like, I have maybe like <laughs> five or 10 people in a chat list, and then everybody else is turned off, so I don't get random, don't get random messages from like people. I'm like, I'm at work. I didn't talk about high school right now, thank you. Yeah, but I have like students. five or ten people that yep. are just... But I do the exact opposite because I use Facebook chat because I work with students all day. If I find out that a yeah. student's not showing up for their airship, I run WHSN, by the way, for anybody who's... Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if someone doesn't show up for their airship, I can't... I jump on Facebook because if I see that green dot, I know you're listening. Yeah. I know you're out there. <laughs> I need you to pay attention to me for a second. <laughs> But just even having even having a list of that you allow to chat and allow not to chat has been yeah. great for it's really spread. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Do the lists work the same for business station? That's all changing. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually don't know. Yesterday yesterday Facebook rolled out timeline for pages. Um, and with that, I, I haven't heard a lot about it. I, I've kind of been slacking on about reading about it. Um, but you can do a lot more with pages now. You can message pages. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure you can do lists for, they call it something a little different, I think. Um, but there is a way to have some sort of list mechanism with pages now. Um, so I'm going to have to open it because that would be kind of nice to have just so you can filter some of the people you know through those methods. How do you do a new That, I you go to show all lists, does it say where you can add one? Right, yeah, so that's kind of the, the easy way. Like, the, at first, if you just want to get in with the list to start to do the kind of basics with it, you'll already have the close friends and acquaintances and the restricted ones, <coughs> so you can just add people to those, and that will be sort of a filter for you. Um, but then if you want to get into some of the more custom ones, I believe if you go into show all lists, uh, then there's a little box to say, add a list. <laughs> With the uh, pages going to this new timeline format, yeah. uh, we so noticed that the, uh, yeah. our tabs are going to be shuffled off into that little you know arrow on the side. Yeah. Is there, are there any tools that we can use to to keep like um, fan exclusive <laughs> items and things like that more readily available on first view? Twitter, um, the parallel to add or remove someone from a list is to go under the 
person's little uh, person icon on their profile and say add or remove the list, and they'll give you a list of uh, lists that you have on Twitter. You can either make a new list or add people to the list you already have. All right, so as far as Facebook and Twitter, they both have lists. There are a couple of differences between the two. Um, on Facebook, lists are always private. You're the only one who can see your lists, and nobody knows what list uh, they're on. Uh, on Twitter, you can choose whether you want a list to be public or private. So if, there, if it's a public list, then someone can go into your profile and see all of your public lists. Uh, so that's kind of handy for some things. Or you can make a list just private so that only you can see it and that nobody else in the public can see it. Uh, on Facebook, the lists can determine who sees which posts. So you can post things only to certain lists or certain groups of people. Uh, whereas on Twitter, anything you see or anything you post, unless you have a locked account, a private account, um, everybody can see everything you post. It doesn't affect that at all. I want to go through some list ideas, both for public ideas and uh, public lists and private lists. So for public lists, uh, of course, those are only on Twitter because Facebook lists are always private. Um, some things you can do for lists uh, are your employees of your company, or if you have an association or some sort of uh, membership group, then you can say the members of those groups. You can make a list of experts in your field so that people can go in and see um, like, for example, if we wanted to do a list of social media experts or web development experts, kind of tips and how-tos on how our clients could uh, get some more ideas on how they could use the site, so sort of a leader's list. You can make a list of all your company's accounts if you have more than one. So, for example, Hassan has a few different uh, Twitter accounts. So you can make a list of all your accounts so that people can go in and make sure that, that they're following all of your, uh, following all the tweets that come out of your campus. And also, uh, of course on Twitter, when you see a list, you can see all the tweets from that list. So for example, for this one, if you had all three uh, Hassan Twitter accounts on the same list, you could just see all the tweets that have come from any Hassan account all at once. private ideas. Uh, industry leaders, if you have people who have kind of inspired you to do better, um, it's nice to just see all those at once. So if you're in a work mode and you just want some inspiration to do work, then that's kind of nice. Business partners or suppliers. Um, so if you have, you know, 10 companies on uh, Twitter or Facebook that supply your business, it's nice to see all those at once to see if they have any deals or see if they, they're having any sales so you can have all those at a glance. Uh, clients, so you can make sure to keep in touch with the people who you know through business. Uh, that's kind of a nice one to have. Media contacts, in case you want to get a message out to uh, some media outlets, you can have some quick access to those and see what they're saying, sort of get in touch with them. Uh, people who have recommended you, are nice because that kind of gives you some incentive to say thanks for doing that uh, and kind of stay in touch with them and make sure that they're, they feel valued for what they've given you. Uh, social media savvy brands. I really love, I have a list, uh, I have a list on Twitter called Doing It Right, which has about a dozen, blank, uh, dozen brands that I really look up to and kind of use as an inspiration for how I do social media for the accounts I do um, because they're just really good at conversations with clients and uh, just staying in touch with people. So that's a nice one. Uh, I also want to put another one on there. Uh, local businesses. I forgot to put this on here. I don't know why I did. Uh, I have a list <coughs> called Bangor Area Businesses, which is really nice because I don't know how many times uh, I've gone to downtown Bangor before I, I went. On Facebook, I'll check, check my Bangor Area Businesses list and see what specials people have for the day. Uh, so before I go, I can decide where I want to have lunch based on what people are having for specials that day. It's kind of nice. <coughs> um, and also for sales and for coupons and deals and you know just what people are doing in general. 
All right, these last two private ideas are sort of a little contentious, but um, I, I think they're really valuable. First of all, people to make a special effort to reach. When I first follow someone, um, or when I'm, I've noticed I haven't talked to someone in a while, I have a list of people, <coughs> of those people, um, so that I can make sure that if they say something, I have a kind of extra incentive to reply to them and kind of engage with them. I uh, just stay in touch with people I haven't talked to in a while. <coughs> and people you don't want to miss. Because uh, let's face it, you do, after a while, you do get, you know, dozens or hundreds of people who you follow or, you know, who come up in your timeline or news feed, either on Facebook or Twitter. And sometimes you just have a group of close friends who you want to make sure you see everything uh, from. So I have a list on both Twitter and Facebook. Like, if I only have a few minutes and I can't read through everything, because nobody reads through everything, um, or not many people read through anything, at least. Uh, so if you have a few people who you definitely don't want to miss posts from, uh, then it's nice if you just have a few minutes you can go through and make sure you read everything from them. Uh, subscribing to lists. <laughs> On Twitter, you can, uh, you can decide if you like a list from somebody else. You can add that to your own lists, which is kind of confusing. Um, but if you go onto someone's profile, um, on the left-hand side, there's a lists option, and that will show you all the public lists that they have. And if you decide that you like one of those, you can subscribe to that, and it will show up under your list of lists <coughs> on Twitter. So you can have kind of quick access to their list, too, to kind of follow that. So for example, I have a couple for Vanuary businesses, like I was saying, um, that lists all the businesses in downtown Bangor, and I have a couple for like all the U.S. Senators and all the U.S. Uh, Congress people. So if I went into any of these lists, you would see all the tweets um, that have come from the people on those lists. So it's only just a filtered list of all of the tweets that are coming from those people, so you can see them all right at a glance. Yes? Is your uh, doing it right list public? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, but there are a few. There's uh, Bull Moose, Elo Bean, Southwest, JetBlue, those kind of things. But I, you know, brands I really like that, uh, I have a few lists that I really do like, so. Do you have a doing it wrong list? No. <laughs> Not a public one, at least. to someone else's list. If you go onto their profile and go into their list area um, and click on any of the lists, then there will be a button um, over in the left-hand side that says uh, subscribe. So if you click on any of the lists there, then it will just come up right over in the sidebar there. And you can click that subscribe and then it will show up in your uh, list of lists. One thing on private lists, one of the ways that I use it, and I just say this, I know that we have a few other instructors in here, is that my students are required to have a Twitter account in my class, but because of FERPA, I can't have a public list of who is in my class. So I use a private list with all my students' accounts in there, and I give them a directory so they can do the same, but that way I'm not violating FERPA, but I can also just click and just see my students and make sure that they've posted what they need to do, make sure they're at being active as they're supposed to be. And I just mention that because I know there's one of our social media type instructors in class. <laughs> And, and that's a good point that a lot of this really is industry focused, so it depends a lot on the type of industry that you're in. Um, so what I might do might be completely different than what you do, but the bottom line is anytime you have a group of people, either on uh, Facebook or Twitter, that you think kind of belong together, it's nice to make a list so that you can see everyone all at once and not have to search and kind of scavenge through your entire following list to see <coughs> those people. So it kind of gives you this nice at a glance. Any other questions? You do more question and answer. Again, so. All right. Thank you. I just want to say one more thing. Um, Facebook
Facebook and Twitter aren't the only social networks? No. Believe it or not. Um, and, and it's important to see, like one of the things I really try to stress to people is it's, even if you don't participate in all the social networks, even if you don't have a Google Plus account, even if you haven't tried Pinterest, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, um, it's nice to know what people are saying about you on these networks, even if you're not a part of them. Um, so I said something a couple of days ago about making a tool to go along with my presentation. Um, and I'm calling it uh, the Sepney Social Searcher, which is at social.sepney.com. Oh, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I spread my on the If you go to social.sepney.com, it gives you, uh, you type in your business name, uh, your location, and your website, and it will give you a list to jump into searches on all these different social networks. Um, so it's kind of nice to just have a watch for it to go into different social networks. because. I mean, just on here, I, I, I made this a couple of days ago, and I didn't realize how many places there are really. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Google+, YouTube, Pinterest, Flickr, Delicious, Foursquare, Yelp, TripAdvisor. Um, Forgot MySpace. It's <laughs> <laughs> just right. music and games like that. But there, it, it, it is tough to keep on track of all this. Uh, so it's nice. Hmm? Can you give us the URL? Social.sepany.com. And I, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of nice just to, and you can bookmark this so you can go into them and, uh, and, 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 and see. Uh, you can bookmark these and just have it on at a reference so you can go in and just check to make sure that people are, uh, what people are saying about it, and uh, make sure no one's trashing our company, and respond to it if they are. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. So that's that. That's my info. And uh, I know there was a lot in there, and I'm going to post these slides so you can go back through them. Um, but if you have any questions for me or Angela, uh, we have some time. So, or for anyone else, if you guys have any ideas, Kelly. I know I get a dumb question. Um, <clears throat> what's your process when you go into Twitter? Like the first thing I do is who DM'd me, who added me, because I you only have so many minutes. Yeah. Right. So do you actually go after you do that? Do you go to the, your list first? Do you go to timeline first? Like, what do you do next? I'd like to hear about this from everyone, actually. But what, what I do, like, I'm on tw Twitter a lot more than Facebook. So I have a group of, pretty much a close friend group, like I was saying, like, you know, a couple of some people who I know well, really well. And uh, you just go through that to make sure I'm not missing anything on Facebook. So I check that once a day or so. Um, and on Twitter, I have one running through the day of, sort of my good friends. Um, so I keep, keep on top of that to see what people are saying. And then the first thing I do is direct messages and then replies and then head over to any of the other accounts that I'm having something to do with and make sure that no one's talking in there. And then if I have time, then I go through to see what other people are saying. And then if I have time beyond that, then sort of kind of get a more general view of what people are saying. Because yeah, I just see that all this list managing, yeah, you can get to the point which I think is great, and I really need it. <laughs> just are you using TweetDeck or I see her. What are you using? Oh, that's gonna get more followers. Uh -oh. that's gonna be we're gonna get into it. Are you? But that's just it. I mean, I, if you're using lists, you can't just use the regular. Right. Well, if you can, I don't think it. it you you can. Well. My my favorite my favorite app on, on on this thing and on the iPad is something called TweetBot. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, it's not for everybody, and it costs a little bit of money. Uh, I know some people really like Hootsuite. I know some people really like TweetDeck. Um, old TweetDeck, not new TweetDeck. Yeah, yeah. 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 version 38.2. <laughs> I thought I was the biggest. I don't like that. <laughs> I'll second TweetBot. I just know what yeah, I can't think of it. It's um, 
Yeah, it's a Twitter client. So it, instead of using the website, you it's an app that you can download to use Twitter, and it lets you do a lot of different things. So it's gives you a nice view of a, a lot of the Twitter clients do this, but uh, kind of lets you move between all the replies, all the messages, all the lists, all the searches. Um, so it makes it a lot less of a hassle to kind of find the stuff you need to get to. So you can search pretty quickly between them. I wish I had a, I should have done a slide of uh, how the apps look for this. But like for example, on <laughs> not that you guys will see this, but along the bottom. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but along the bottom, just trust me. Um, along the bottom of Tweetbot, you can kind of customize these, but it's uh, a, a stream of everything that's going on on Twitter. Uh, and then all your replies, all your messages, and then you can customize the last two, and I have those as uh, my favorite searches and my lists. So you can do other things too. You can do your favorites, you can do uh, your profile, retweets, and that sort of thing. But you can do messages. One thing, I know that uh, here at Hustle, we don't give anything religious, but one thing that Appliances that you use, you everything is is resident on Hootsuite. Like you know, your people that you follow and all that kind of stuff. So if you're picking up this, you're picking up this, or you're going and right. using your laptop and then going over to the meeting house, it's all that stuff is on that one client. Yeah. And they've made it a lot better because I I'm just going to start using it again because if there was a while there where it just stunk, but now it's great. It's a lot better. What are people using on Android nowadays? Just or, um, Tweetcaster. But it drains the battery in the worst way. I went back to Which regular pulled? Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I did. I had TweetDeck on it and it just kept blowing everything up and I just yeah. went back to Twitter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, TweetDeck yeah. on Android. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. Back to the old version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, what questions? Uh, following the timeline here, um, there's a Pinterest buzz that, that's coming out, and I, I think that's something we've talked about here, about somebody presenting on perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use it, I'd love to know more about mm -hmm. it. I know, because I can't have it. But that's just it, I don't know enough about it, I'm how to get into it, I don't know where to start kind of thing with it. It's, it's a little overwhelming. I don't think we need to have Tanya do it. You can pull it up like a little bit. I'm going to ask That could be yours. It's going to make it all fat, though. It's all in his. It's interesting. Darn you, tell the death. And is there a place for business and interest? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. about the, the traffic from that HubSpot gets the, themselves is huge compared to uh, Facebook, which was something I wouldn't, you know, I'm still trying to navigate it to. It's a great book, it's free, it's 40 pages. Some of it's junk, but you know, if you get, if you get 10 good pages out of it, it's great. Also, I briefly discussed Pinterest with Shannon Kinney right after uh, Social Media Breakfast Central Maine, and her Pinterest boards are really, really well organized, and she's continually updating them, but she's got them organized in a business way, and I'm kind of using her right now as an inspiration for how I, I, I would like to see it done, and she's got it based around media marketing, and uh, it's, it's really nicely done, though. I can't remember her exact URL. I can find it and put it on the, the Twitter feed, though. Yeah. To, to the point of, okay, this is how, I, I set an account up once, somebody sent me an invitation, somehow I got an invitation, okay, I think it was a club or something, but, um, and I'll probably go find it, but does the average person still need an invitation, or can you just sign up for it now? Is you can sign, sign up and they'll send an invitation. Yeah, yeah. You, have, you have to request an invitation yeah. right now. You have to request an invitation. Okay. And it might, but it takes a couple of days. A day or so. Yeah. 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 But we all saw how that worked with Google Plus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. I am there. I can make it there. Until you're alone. <laughs> 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 
I'm there too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep her company. <laughs> <laughs> I think of it like the Doug Hall um, Innovation Engineer at the University. One of the things that Doug Hall says is scale fast, scale cheap. So I went over to Google Plus when it started. I very quickly realized it was a complete waste of my time and energy, and I deleted my account. Scale fast, scale cheap. Get in, get out. It's going to come back just for SEO. They're driving it. They are. Yeah. That's the It's not a true social. The other thing we've talked about for um, topics, I think Pinterest would be really good to put one together. Um, the other one is just about, uh, we're sort of joking about it, but okay, now you've got timeline. Um, you know, coming up with how to use timeline effectively and, and, and how to really manage you know, the changes and all that sort of stuff once the dust has had a chance to settle, like very quickly afterwards, trying to do something on that as well. I'd love to talk about the opportunities raised by the cover photo. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole new thing. There's so many things you can do there other than just put your company logo on it. That can really be a game changer for how you use that, but I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I, mean, I know that there's opportunity there, but I don't know how to take it. They do have some rules, though, like you can't put like ads or anything on it, like no prices yeah. or... And they don't want it to be text-based, mostly text-based. Yeah. Interesting. So these are things to know. Yeah. And this is literally yesterday. <laughs> they launched this right. yesterday, so it's, it, it's, it's going to be interesting over the next month or so, especially, to see what people do with this. I like the, uh, the sorting feature, though. Yeah. To see what other people are saying. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think they finally got into good. I make a motion for Tanya on Pinterest. Yeah. 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 Yeah.